Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining in for today's talk. And our prayer is today that this talk will encourage you and that God will speak to you through it. And I do wanna say, you gotta subscribe to this YouTube channel right now if you wanna see more stuff like this, all the latest content coming out. And also, don't forget, check out our website, myhopecity.cc and connect with us on Facebook by liking our page, Hope City Epton, and joining our Facebook groups. Again, thank you so much for joining us and I can't wait to see how God is gonna to speak to you through this talk. Hope City Online. So excited for today and thank you for joining us. We are one church in many rooms. And if you are visiting with us today, you've invited us into your home. A huge, huge thank you just for allowing us to spend a, an hour or so with you today. And it is December. It is officially Christmas time. And usually this is our biggest sort of in-person month. And things are different. And we don't know this Christmas if we are going to strictly be online. If some things will be in person, we're hopeful some things are in person. But if not, we know that God is going to be doing great things. I know we've already mentioned it throughout the service, but it would be great if you would go ahead and pre-register for our Christmas Eve services. Uh, we just are expecting to have some in-person gatherings then, uh, but if not, it's okay. But we need to know because space is limited in COVID, and so we would love for you to pre-register for that. And if something happens and we're not able to be together, uh, that's okay. We'll do it online but it would help us a whole, whole lot. Well, are you ready to get into our new series for the month of December? Somebody in your house right now, just say the good news. The good news. And we're gonna talk about the good news because you know what? 2020 has definitely been a year filled with bad news. And it seems just over and over that we have just had bad news and bad news and more bad news. Maybe you don't remember some of the bad news over the last 12 months. I, I was trying to remember, think about it. Even in the staff meeting, just as we were getting ready for December, I asked them, you know, what, what are some, some of the bad news things that, that have come across your screen throughout this year? And we got chatting or just talking about bad stuff. And I know where all your minds are going right now. All of you remember when you heard that we were getting rid of plastic straws. I, and that was terrible. And I know, yeah, for good reasons, but still the inconvenience of now, you know, going to a restaurant or fast food chain and, and getting that cardboard or whatever it is that we now drink out of. And, and, and then I, we were talking about some other bad news. Oh, it's hard to believe that it was this year that Tim Hortons changed the lids on their cups. I mean, you talk about bad news. You, you know, so it's supposed to be for good reasons, but, but man, when they changed that, I had it all figured out, and I think it was Peter Bernie, our drummer, he taught me the secret to the old Tim Hortons lid, and I know some of you that aren't from Canada today, you're like, what, Tim Hortons lid, what are you talking about? Yeah, you didn't go through the stuff we did this year, wherever you are, because the old lids, there was a trick, you could push it, you could open it, and then push it in, and you could go over whatever bumps in your car, and it would not pour out. It would not leak anywhere. And so it was bad news. Many of you were devastated when Prince Harry and Meghan stepped back as royals. And oh, the heartache. I know my mother-in-law was just devastated as she follows that so closely. But for a lot of us here in Canada, it was cool because guess where they decided they were going to go? To Canada. And they were going to live here in Canada. And it was wonderful. But the bad news continued for us. Because that was short lived. And they said we can't live in Canada any longer. We're going to move to California. And then in the middle of all the stuff going on. Of course there were murder hornets. And all this bad stuff. In the middle of this year. Our poor youth pastor. He, he realized with all the bad news going on. That it was a lot harder to find a girl to go on a date with them, and where are you going to go on a date? I mean, just full of bad news after bad news. And I know some of that bad news, comparing to everything going on, probably isn't that bad. Over this year, we've seen just thing after thing pop up, and we can remember, it's hard to believe this year, that Kobe Bryant passed away in a helicopter crash, and We've heard the news about wildfires and other natural disasters. And yes, of course, COVID. 
and all the fallout over the last few months of this virus and the effects it's had on really all of us in different ways. Maybe we battled the illness ourselves or family member or maybe we've just tried to navigate, you know, how our life looks now over the last 12 months full of bad news. And that's why this December we, we wanted to just flip the script and we wanted to focus in on good news. On good news, but not just good news because we know that good news can come and good news can go. I mean, Kawhi Leonard became a Toronto Raptor and they won the title, but bad news followed shortly after when we found out he was leaving to go to California. And, and so good news can come and good news can go, but what we want to talk about over the next few weeks is the good news, the great news. The news of Jesus Christ coming to this world to be our Savior. God in flesh coming down to the world that he created. I want us to dive in to a little bit, and this is where we're going to kind of launch each week over the next, next few weekends together. Really a part of the Christmas story we read in Luke chapter 2. And it says this, it says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I, I'm just going to pause there. I'm thankful that throughout the Bible, over and over, God reminds us, do not be afraid. Because a lot of us, when we hear bad news, or bad news comes our way, or we're on social media and bad news pops up, it fills us with anxieties or worries or fears. And I don't know everything that was going on in this setting as we begin to read this story, but I do know that the angel told them, do not be afraid. He said, I bring you Good news. Someone right now in your house, wherever you are, you need to just say good news. Like just saying good news will make you feel better. Good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. We're going to look at this the next three weeks as the angel told them. He said, I bring you good news. He said, first of all, the good news will cause great joy for all the people. And then he says, in the town of David, a Savior has been born. He is Messiah. I want today to, to just talk a little bit about this great joy to all people. I, I need you to know today and understand that joy that the Bible talks about is not something that's temporal. And if you're not a follower of Jesus or you've never really studied the Bible, you, you sometimes would think of joy as, you know, well, yeah, I have joy in my life, but then I have sadness in my life, and, and it kind of fluctuates depending on the day, depending what news I get, depending what's going on, but, but the joy that the Bible talks about it is not something that fluctuates depending on what season we're in or what's coming our way. Joy that the Bible talks about, especially this great joy that Jesus was going to bring truly was something that just lasts forever. That regardless of what is happening, happening in the world or in your life, that you would have great joy. Joy is a lifestyle, not a feeling. It's not just a feeling. You see, great joy is there in 2019. When you look back 2019, man, things are great. December 2019, man, it was the best Christmas ever. But joy is also still there and evident in 2020. So the question is this. 
And what I, I want to teach a little bit on, because hopefully this will help some of you today, uh, especially some of you that are, are a follower of Jesus and you say, well, I've read about joy and Jesus gives great joy, but I don't even always experience great joy. I, I mean, I've personally, I, I've had moments and times over the last 10 months where I haven't felt very joyful. And, and I, I'm starting to realize probably it's been I'm scrolling social media and I'm reading bad news and it starts to kind of bring me down. And so what I want to talk about today is how do we call cultivate, or how do we live in the joy of the Lord? You see, some of us, we, we say, well, isn't the joy of the Lord supposed to always be there if I'm a follower of Jesus? Shouldn't I be filled with his joy? The answer is yes. We've talked recently over the last few weekends, especially as we dove into the book of James, how all of us we, we have our carnal nature, our human nature. But the Bible tells us that when we come to Christ, when we receive him as Lord, that we are a new creation in Christ, that, that we, we are born again, that, that we are new. And so we don't understand sometimes that the old nature doesn't just disappear, that it's still there. And so some of you, the reason you say, well, I, I thought the joy of the Lord was always there. I'm a follower of Jesus. How come I'm not always experiencing it? I would say it's because it's kind of the old nature and the carnal nature that kind of brings us down and discourages us. So how do we cultivate or live in the joy of the Lord? The first thing is this. You have to surrender to God's love. And this really is for all of us especially if you today are joining us and you say, I'm not a follower of Jesus. I, I'm not a disciple of the King. I, I've never given my life to Him. To really have the joy of the Lord, you have got to surrender to God's love. This is one thing that I know, that God will never stop pursuing you. God is going to pursue you with His love day after day, after day, after day. You see, he proved how much he loved you. That's why we're celebrating this season, Christmas time, when hope came in a manger. We're celebrating the fact that God loved you so much and loved me so much that he came to this world. He loves you and he will never, ever stop loving you. You can deny him. You can say, I don't believe in him. I don't think he even exists. I don't believe the story of Christmas. You can turn your back on him. You can maybe grow up around a church or you know about the Bible and know about the Christmas story and say, well, I don't care about all of that and I'm just turning my back and I'm living the way I want to live. Do you know what? No matter what you do, it doesn't stop God from loving you and pursuing you with his love. And you will never experience true, genuine joy until you surrender to God's love. I'm convinced of this, that all of us will walk through life. And if we refuse to surrender to God's love, there will always be an emptiness. There will always seem like something's missing. And that's why for some of you, you... You've had great achievements and you've experienced greatness in your life and you've had a lot of moments of pure happiness and you thought, well, this is going to be what, what really satisfies me and finally I, I, I'll just feel like I am whole. But yet there still seems to be an emptiness and I would say that is the emptiness that only can be filled with the joy of the Lord that comes when we surrender to His love. The second thing is this, if you're going to cultivate or live in the joy of the Lord, you need to pursue God's plan. Pursue God's plan. I, I love this about God. That God gave you and me free will and free choice. And when we breathe our first breath here on this earth, we weren't meant to just be wanderers. God gives us free choice, but the Bible teaches us that God has a plan 
and a purpose for each and every one of us. That before you were born, God had a plan for you. And I need you to, to just understand today that you will always be, be wondering, why isn't my life filled with joy whenever you are not pursuing what God's plan is for your life. The Bible tells us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be added to you. That if you say, I, I need joy and I don't have a lot of joy in my life, maybe I've surrendered and given my life to Jesus, but, but why is it that, that I really don't have joy? And I would argue that maybe it's because you're not continually pursuing his purpose for your life. And that can come in many shapes and forms and sizes. It, it can be in many locations, anywhere around the world. It can be different jobs. You say, well, I, I don't know. Am I supposed to do this or am I supposed to do that? You can pursue the plan of God for your life right where you are now. And when you begin to realize God's got a plan for me wherever I am. He's got a plan for me in my home. He's got a plan for me in my family. He's got a plan for me at the place I work now. All of a sudden you will start to live in the joy of the Lord. The last thing, and there's a lot more. The last one I want to talk about today is we need to celebrate God's goodness. I've taught a lot and it's helped me day after day, especially the last 10 months, to, to focus on good things, to think about good things. The Bible tells us to do that. Count your blessings. I think every day we need to get up and focus on the goodness of God, but I need you to know that it's not just focusing that we need to celebrate the goodness of God. To really celebrate it. And when you begin to really celebrate the goodness of God, I believe that his joy starts to, to fill your life. Why do we do these things? It's because, yeah, the joy of the Lord's already in us. If we have given our lives to him, it's there. But, but now we, we've got we've to start to feed that new man, that new creation in Christ Jesus. And, and start to live in that joy in one way is celebrating God's goodness. I know it's hard for some of us and we all have different personalities. And some of you, maybe you've never been to our church in person or, and you've only joined us online, but you'll still watch and you'll think like, well, why are they getting so excited when they're singing songs? Like, what's the big deal? And, and, and wouldn't they just stand still and just sing their song just as stiff? And I know some of us are stiff and we don't move a whole lot. I get that. I understand that. But the reason, the reason that when we get together or, or we even join in our homes, and I encourage you, don't just sit on a couch when you're doing church online. You need to celebrate the goodness of God. The Bible talks to us about singing and lifting our hands and shouting, rejoicing. And as you begin to do these things, I'm telling you, the joy of the Lord will begin to fill your life. Just a couple of verses, Psalm 47, 1 says, clap your hands. All you nations shout to God with cries of joy. Psalm 66 says, shout for joy to God all the earth. Psalm 67, it says, may the nations be glad and sing for joy. You need to celebrate God's goodness. I know even the calmest of you, you have got excited about something in your life. You, you, you have celebrated something. And when you celebrate it, at least a smile came on your face. At least something leaped inside your heart. I know some of you have been at sporting events, and maybe it wasn't even your team, but, but just the environment and the atmosphere. And all of a sudden you're like, woohoo! Whoa, where'd that come from? Like, I'm so reserved. And, and what was it? You were celebrating. And if you're going to cultivate the joy of the Lord in your life, you've got to celebrate God's goodness. Lift a hand towards heaven. Say, God, I thank you for your goodness. Let a little shout out once in a while. When you're all alone or you're driving in your car, who cares if all the other people look at you and say, what is that person doing in their car? I'm just celebrating the goodness of God. Because God has been good. And as you begin to celebrate his goodness, he will fill you 
with joy. I, I was looking at these scriptures and I, I know the real meaning of some of them is, is again, it's about joyful worship and joyful celebration, but I, I noticed and I, I looked in a few different translations and, and I guess I just know this to be true in my life because there are a lot of times in my life where I don't feel necessarily joyful. But I do know that in those moments, if I just find a place alone with God, or I'll turn some worship music on and I'll just start to celebrate the goodness of God and I'll lift my voice or I'll lift my hands towards heaven. And, and, and you know, there's times, yes, there's times when I'm in a gathering with a bunch of people that I get a little excited. I'm like, I love you, Jesus. And there's times when I'm all alone that I do that. Now, I know if someone saw me all alone doing that, they think I was crazy. But here's what I found, that as you begin to celebrate God's goodness, his joy fills you. In these verses we just read, it says, shout for joy to God. Sing for joy. Yes, I know it's talking about joyful expression, but I also know this, that there are times you're not going to feel it, but as you begin to sing about the goodness of God, you begin to celebrate his goodness. You begin to realize, I'm starting to feel the joy of the Lord in my life. And I was discouraged and I was down, but something is shifting, something is changing. I wrote this acronym for joy, I don't do it often. But it says, simply J, it starts with Jesus. Joy starts with Jesus. He's the one that can truly only give us true joy, everlasting joy. But also, the O, it, it leads us to others. Again, your plan, your purpose. Joy starts with Jesus. But if you want to experience joy, you pursue God's plan for your life, and God's plan for your life is to be an impact in someone else's life. I, I can promise you that. Say, well, what's God's plan for my life? It is that you would be an impact in someone else's life, that you'd make a difference in their life. And then joy ultimately ends with you. You surrender to Jesus. You pursue God's plan for your life. Start to celebrate His goodness. You will start to feel better. You will start to live in the joy of the Lord. The angel appeared to them and he said, This is great joy. But not just great joy, this is great joy for all people. I love that about our Savior. Christmas time. If we really turn our focus to what it's all about. He wants to give you joy, but that joy is not just for people that go to church or grew up in church. It's not just for people group that lived in Jerusalem. It's not just a certain color of people. It's not just a certain race certain social status but the good news he said is joy for all people Jesus would actually quote these verses when he was here on earth from Isaiah 61 and they were written by the prophet Isaiah he was foretelling about the coming Messiah talking about what Jesus would do and he wrote this, he said, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, to release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, 
the oil of joy instead of mourning. A garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness and planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. Angel said, got good news. It's great joy for all people. He brings hope to your darkness. In the middle of bad news, yes, I can dare say that we've never really had a moment, definitely in my lifetime, where the whole world has simultaneously received bad news after bad news. And maybe the bad news goes way beyond what we are dealing with as a world that you've dealt with personal bad news. And the only way you can explain the feeling inside of you as you deal with all this bad news is it's as though my life's just dark. I'm alone. No hope. All right, I got to read one more section of Scripture to you before we wrap up today. And this is just the beginning of what's going to be a, a fun December. Again, back to the prophet Isaiah who would foretell about the coming Savior. In verse 6, I'm going to read. It's a familiar part of the Christmas story, but as I went back knowing and that we'd be discussing this stuff through December, I went back to read from the prophet Isaiah. And before the familiar part that we read quite often at Christmas time, this is what it says in Isaiah chapter 9. says, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel and his people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break their oppressor's rod just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The boots of the warrior and the uniforms bloodstained by war will be burned. They will be fuel for the fire. For a child is born to us a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven's armies will make this happen. I got good news today. It's great joy for all people. We can live in the joy of the Lord. And it starts with you surrendering to God's love. And so today, in your homes, wherever you are, maybe the lunchroom at work, I want to give you the opportunity to surrender to God's love. To allow God to Give you dancing for morning. 
joy where there was sorrow. For the light of the world to step into your darkness and change your life. If today you say, yeah, I need Jesus. I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. I'm just going to lead you and you can just say these words after me. Jesus, I need you. I need you in my life. I need you in my world. I believe you are the light of heaven. I need your joy. Jesus, I understand that begins with me surrendering to you. Receiving your forgiveness. Making you my Lord. So today, Jesus, I do that. I believe in you. Forgive me of my sin. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to know right now, the Bible says that if you just prayed that prayer, all of heaven is rejoicing. Oh, a place that's full of joy just got even more joyful because you gave your life to Christ you prayed that prayer, no, that's just the beginning. I want to know you prayed that prayer. Our team here at Hope City want to know that you prayed that prayer. This faith journey is not something you walk alone. So if you prayed that prayer, I need you right now to grab your phone and text I prayed that prayer to 506 300 3097 Five zero six three hundred three zero nine seven. Well, church, friends, I want to thank you for being a part of Church Online today. And we are going to have an amazing, amazing December as we celebrate the good news. And it might be all online or it might be in person, but regardless, God is reaching people with His love this December. I love you. Thank you for being a part of church today. God bless you. I hope today's talk was encouraging to you. And hey, we would love to hear from you of how God spoke to you through this talk. And again, you can message us on Facebook. Make sure to like and follow us while you're there. Hope City F10. You can reach out on our website, myhopecity.cc. And don't forget, subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can stay up to date with all the content coming out. And we are excited to see how God is going to continually move through your life through this. Love you guys. Have a great day.